in Surah Al-Fatiha, Iyaka na'abudu wa Iyaka nasta'in. Nobody other than you will we obey. Nobody other than you we will worship and we will just ask or seek help from you. So these are the covenants which a person makes with Allah. So it is the disobedience when they make promises and pacts and covenants with Allah, they break the covenants of Allah. This is the first behavior and attitude and the attribute of the fasiqin. The second is what? They do what? They severe what Allah has ordered to join. Now what has Allah ordered his bondsmen to join? Which the disobedience aware? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered the bondsmen to join the relations of kin, the blood relations, the relations because of the mother's womb. And how do you relate to that? How do we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to join what? The relations of kin? How many times, how many times in the verses of Quran has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders, ordered us to join or to keep the bonds of the relations of kin? Like verse number 83 of Surah Al-Baqarah, which we will be inshallah soon, soon discussing, Allah says, Mentioning the covenant with Bani Israel, Allah says, "What if Ahad Namitha or Bani Israel, la ta'buduna illallah, wa bil walidaini ihsana wa bil qurba wa yatama wa masakin?" When Allah accepted a pledge from the Bani Israel, Allah made a covenant with the Bani Israel that worship none except Allah and be kind or do good or do ihsan to your parents, to the relation of kins, to the orphans and to the poor. These are the 10 commandments of Musa salam, which was taken as a covenant from the people of Bani Israel. And these are the basic 10 teachings of Prophet and the teachings of Quran as well. So in these first 10 commandments of Moses and 10 teachings of the Quran, the first is to avoid making partners with Allah, to be kind and to be merciful and do ihsan with the parents. And then the third right is of the relations of kin. Then in the first verse of Surah Nisa, Allah says, bihi wal arham. Fear Allah. So if you want to be pious, if you want to be God-fearing, in whose name you demand your rights, of the ties and the relations of kin. So the behavior and the mannerism of the pious people and the God-fearing people is to join the bonds of kin. Then in the verse 90 of Surah An-Nahl, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the three and highlighted the three clear do's and don'ts of Quran. The three do's of Quran, Allah says, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wa lihsan wa ita ithil qurba. The three highlighted do's of Quran, Allah enjoins upon, upon you, number one, justice, then doing goodness, that is being kind and doing ihsan, and third is itai vil qurba, spending generosity towards your relations of kin. And then in the verse 177 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah explaining the concept of virtues, ayat al bir Allah says, "Lais al birr an tawallu wajuha kun kibal al mashriki wal maghrib, walakin al birr wa manam na billahi wal yawm al akhiri, wal malaikati wal kitabi wal nabiyin, wa aat al mal ana hubbihi zavil qurba wal yatama wal masakin." Allah says. The concept of true virtue is not that you turn your faces towards the east or west, but the true virtue is, number one, belief. The first virtuous condition is belief in Allah, in the day of judgment, in his angels, in his books, and in his prophets. And after belief, the first virtuous deed is what? To spend to spend his wealth for the love of Allah on whom? And the relations of kin. So if I summarize here, if we 
all of us, we want to fulfill the covenant of Allah. You want to fulfill the covenant of Allah. You want to come up to the level of the God-fearing, pious people. You want to obey the dues of Allah. You want to be among the virtuous people and you want to do the virtuous deeds. And fourthly, you do not want to be among the disobedience. And what do we need to do? We need to, we need to connect and we need to join the bonds of kin. And we need to refrain from severing and from breaking and disconnecting the bonds of the kin. Loving and treating our relatives well is what is being ordered here. And you can gather all this, what Allah orders to join. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Bukhari that Prophet said, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Qala Allah ta'ala man wasalaka wa saltuhu wa man qata'aka qata'atuhu. That Allah said, I shall keep connection with one who keeps, who keeps you united and I will sever connection with one who severs you, O Raham. So this is what Allah's orders is to join the relations of kin. And similar words have been reported in Abu Dawood with Abdul, uh, Abdul Rahman bin Of that Allah, the most exalted says, I am Allah, I am Rahman, the merciful. I have created the bonds of kinship and given the name of Rahimah. Thus whoever joins it, I shall join him. And whoever breaks it, I shall break him. So anybody who is joining the relations of kin, Allah will join him with what? Allah will join him with his blessings, with his bounties, with his guidance. Allah will join him and connect him with Quran. And anybody who is going to break the relations of kin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will break him, will disconnect him from his blessings, from his bounties, from his guidance, with his, with his love, with his connections of Quran. So this is the importance of joining the relationship of kin. And then Prophet has, has warned us all, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who has reported in Bukhari and Muslim, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la yatkulul jannata qati'un. Whoever violates, whoever surveys the relationships of kin shall not go to heaven. La yatkulul janna. As-Sadiq al-Amin, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has warned all of us that the person who surveys the relationship of kin he will not be allowed to enter into Jannah. What can you assume? Will he be allowed to enter into Jannah? Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala and who reports that Prophet Salaam said in Bukhari and Muslim, it has been reported that whoever wants, whoever wants an increase in his sustenance and that the marks of his feet remain for a longer time in the world, that he lives long, should be kind and helpful to his relatives. So if all of us, we want to prolong our life and we want that our sustenance and risk has barakah, then what do we need to do? We need to be kind to our relatives and relations of kin and to join the relationships of kin. And you know what? How do we need to join these relationships of kin and how do we need to relate to them? As Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who narrates in Bukhari, the Prophet said that the one to join the ties is not truly the one who reciprocates a kind act of relatives, but the one to join the ties is who joins the ties even when they, when the others severe them. So this is exactly how we need to join the relationships of kin. That people who are disconnecting the connections, we connect with them. It is reported in Tarimzi that Prophet Sallallahu was asked that what is the way of saving our hereafter? That how can we save our hereafter? You know what Prophet Sallallahu said? You maintain the ties with one 
who surrendered it with you. You give to the one who deprived you and you forgive the one who wronged you. So this is how we do not reciprocate in the relationships of kin. And we just go on maintaining it with people who are trying to cut them off. And this is why and how we can save our hereafter. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reports that there was a person, he reports in Muslim that there was a person who came to Prophet sallallahu and he asked a problem in his life. He said, O Messenger of Allah, I have relatives with whom I try to keep in touch, but they cut me off. I treat them well, but they abuse me in return. I am patient and forgiving towards them, but they insult me in return. Kindly instruct and guide me what should I do and how do I need to relate with them? You know what Prophet said? He said that if you are as you say, that the state of affairs you're telling me in your dealings and your mannerism, if they are exactly as you are claiming, then it is as if you are putting hot ashes in their mouth. And Allah will continue to support you as long as you go on doing and behaving this way. So this is what Hadith teaches us, how we need to maintain and relate to our relations of kin. And then Prophet Sallallahu was asked, Prophet Sallallahu tell us, how can we enter into Jannah? And Prophet Sallallahu said, you know, four things he said, feed the poor and hungry. Number one, feed the poor and the hungry, join the bonds of the kin, promote the salam, and offer salah when people are asleep, you will enter paradise. You will enter paradise. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. And then Bukhari, it is reported that Prophet said that whoever believes in Allah in the day of judgment should maintain good relations with the relations in of kin. And in Bukhari, it is also reported that Prophet said, a Muslim is not allowed to abandon his Muslim brother for more than three days. And it is also reported in another tradition that Prophet said that if a Muslim severs the ties of kin for a year, it is as if he has shed his blood. And Prophet has taught us that if two Muslims, they have cut off or severed their relation of kin, and when they meet each other, then the person who proceeds with salam before the other is closer to the rahmah and barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Prophet has promised that when there are two people who have cut off their relation and who are like, they are they are away from each other and they do not meet with each other, they do not connect with each other, then the person who says salam first, he has been promised as a palace in the center, in the heart of the Jannah. 